boss, Mrs. Davis. I'm just getting my bearings and keeping an eye out for enemy tanks. <laughs> I know they're not. But after what you've just done, they're not going to be at all that friendly, are they? You've got a sort of built-in radar for things to hit, haven't you? Well, watch out! I brought you here because it's empty. 500 square miles of nothing to hit and you attempt to seek out and destroy one of our best British battle tanks. <laughs> You're quite some relentless guided missile, aren't you? Uh, it should be worth an extra division to NATO if they can find a way of making you selective so you don't knock out ours as well. Uh, stick you on the German border in any small family saloon, the Russians would never get through. <laughs> with the Germans be a sort of one-woman no-go area. <laughs> Tell your husband. I don't get frankly, lady, I don't give a damn. He's only a bank manager, not the head of the KGB. <laughs> Small, I asked. I had you brought here to the bank on purpose, Small. You don't mind if I call you Small, do you? My wife tells me you've been bullying her again. Well, true or untrue? Be frank, Small. Help me. I merely wish to know whether or not my wife is a liar. <laughs> is my wife a liar, Small? What could be simpler than that? Yes or no? Which is it to be? No. I so admire forthrightness in the man. Relax, Small, I'm not about to eat you. I have a problem. Yes. Two problems. Firstly, a small one with which you may be able to help. Oh, anything I can do, sir. I have searched my recent memory, and uh, there appears to be an anomaly. Try as I may, I cannot recall, though I could, of course, be mistaken, but I would appear to have no recollection of ever having asked you to sit. <laughs> Problem number two. My wife, Gloria, feels that she needs more lessons, an extra two hours a week. Oh, oh. Did you say something? <laughs> Strange. I could have sworn I heard you whimper. <laughs> what do you say, yes or yes? No. <laughs> I'm so glad you see it my way. <laughs> but if I do agree to the extra two hours a week, what do I get out of it eventually? Eventually, I should say a broken neck. <laughs> Don't worry. Mummy's coming back. She's just gone to the door. <laughs> it's nothing really to do with Bob's job. Something else. A project. Oh, I see. Well, I mean, there are lots of jobs you could do. You could uh, mow the lawn, uh, clean out the tool shed, uh, weed the rock garden. Have you something a little less manual? I'm only ten, you know, and my muscles aren't fully developed yet. Your brain is. I wash up, change the babies, bake a cake. You sure you're not a girl guide? Oh, no, no. Their uniform's completely different. There's other differences as well. I take back all I said about your brain. Pardon? Ah, oh, look, he's having you on, lovey. Right, washing up. You do that little lot, and then you get your shilling. What's the shilling? <laughs> I wish I'd asked that. Right, a shilling's a bob, you know, as in bob a job, and uh, a bob is five pence. Five pence? You're joking. Fifty pence? All right. Now, there's an answer to union blackmail. Pay up. Mind you, I do think a 1,000% increase in pay is a bit excessive, even if it does get results. At home, we have a machine for doing this. Oh, so do we. Me. <laughs> <laughs> what is this project of yours? We need a new scout car for collecting jumble and camping. Oh, do that as well, do you? But <laughs> we can't afford to buy one, so I'm making one ourselves. This is my own design. Ah! Looks a bit like a dead bus. <laughs> oh, I see. Now, that's very ingenious. It's sort of... Uh, but what would you say the uh, technical term for it was? Purse. <laughs> Trolley? That's it exactly. You see, I've overcome the problem of stability that was inherent in the old one by giving my new design four wheels. Uh, well, isn't isn't that more expensive? That's what we need the money for. Oh well, look, I have a word with my husband. He may be able to help. He's uh, he's in the trade, so to speak. Is he a scrap metal dealer? 
Near enough. Mark, memorize. <laughs> I guess the features of this place. He is right. Public enemy number one, sir. Public enemy number one. Yes, sir. Very good, sir. Cartwright. Target for today, sir. Today and every day, Cartwright. What exactly has he done, sir? I mean, to, to uh, justify putting the entire C dip onto him. <laughs> what has he done? What has he done? He has annoyed your beloved leader. <laughs> Me. Well, butter. I want this man watched. I want this man followed. Every little move he makes, every little thing he does, you will report to me. If he should sneeze, I want to hear it. If he should drop a fag end on the road, I want it analysed. If he should park on a double yellow line, if he should park on a single yellow line, if he should park on anything remotely yellow or remotely linear, I want him booked. I want him stopped. I want him stopped and stopped again. I want him. I want him. Sir? Excuse me, sir? Are you asking us to harass him, sir? <laughs> right, lad, right. Isn't that a bit unethical, sir? Unethical, sir? Unethical? Of course it's unethical. <laughs> and if any of you men hear of any one Harris in this man, you will report the matter at once to your senior police officer. Me! <laughs> Gentlemen. The smooth running of this town is governed by the smooth running of this police station, which in turn is governed by the smooth running of other things, chiefly among which is the pressure of my blood and the level of my bile. If either of these two vital mechanisms are upset, then everybody, and by that I mean everybody, will be upset. Understood? Sir! In order to return these two useful organs to their normal equilibrium, it may be necessary, in the words of the immortal Lenin, and I refer, it need hardly be said, to the bearded Bolshevik gentleman, it may be necessary for one man to suffer for the sake of the rest. Go forth, beloved minions, and make this one man suffer. <laughs> Hello, Leicester Small School of Motoring. The school that treats you like a giant. Pass that test the small way. <laughs> we may be small, but... Hello? <laughs> Hello? You patient sod. <laughs> Leicester Small School of Motoring, let us pick you up and drop you. <laughs> oh, hello, Mrs. Small. It's your husband's idea. Telephone sales, he calls it. I have to read a few of these cards out over the phone, but you know what his handwriting's like. Outgoing calls would be better. Right. Right, I'll give him your message. Bye. First, Barrow, Gurney, Scat. Troop. Hello, Leicester Small School of Motoring. We may be small, but we make your feet big. <laughs> feel big. Make you feel big. <laughs> oh, come on, come on. It'll be out of date again by the time I get there. Excuse 
be. You've dropped something. No. <laughs> yes, you have. It's down there. 50 feet. I don't carry small change. Small change. That's 10 shilling. Half a nicker. You can afford to throw them round, can you? What are you, a coal miner or something? No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're pinching my money. <laughs> He's pinching your money. You're pinching my arm. I'm talking to you. Go away. <laughs> Go away. Just like that, eh? <laughs> you like living dangerously, do you? Do you, uh, you don't know me, do you? You do not recognize my face. You obviously do not contribute to the Kung Fu Weekly. <laughs> now, the practical hairdresser, that's more in your line, isn't it? Or the Beano, or the Dandy. Pig Breeders Gazette. <laughs> Outside! What? Outside! I thought that's what you said. <laughs> Can we come to some negotiable settlement? Yes. Outside. <laughs> right, you. Outside. <laughs> Can you hear me? Are you chicken or something? Oh, uh, outside. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, 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 so I think I ought to uh, ought to warn you that these hands have killed. <laughs> They're overtrained, you see. No half measures in the SAS. Just as long as you understand. <laughs> you seem a nice sort of fellow. I mean, in other circumstances, I, I could get to like you. You sure you don't want to change your mind? All right, if you want to spend the rest of your life in a bath chair, go on after you. report it to the police. I mean, we can't have ordinary, decent people being beaten up by a gang of thugs. <laughs> so they couldn't any more bother for a while. Not with the kind of damage you did to them. Uh. It was some time before that big bloke, Scarface, with a bicycle chain. Before he gets out of hospital. Uh. Have a lot of explaining to do, he will. Uh. Especially with a dislocated jaw. Uh. Not to mention a broken leg. Hey, careful of me tooth, I think it's loose. Who's your dentist? Huh? I'm got her. Well, everybody ought to have a dentist. I'll tell you what, I'll make you an appointment with mine. See if he can fit you in as an emergency. There you are, good as new. Huh? Well, slightly shock sore, but you'll live. Does it hurt? Only when I hurt. Uh... You'll have to <laughs> avoid her in then, won't you? Seriously, though, I don't think you all go to the police. I don't need you, they keep coming to me. <laughs> I'd hate to keep you from other more pressing duties, Inspector. Oh, that's all right, sir. It's a pleasure to be of assistance. There must be better ways of wasting government money. Shouldn't you be out catching burglars or something? Burglars only burgle by night. Housebreakers do it by daylight. A simple mnemonic we use in the force. It would have to be simple. Not that there are many in these parts, more's the pity. I often yearn for a bit of action now and then. What wouldn't I give for a nice, juicy murder? <laughs> Me too. Instead of which, we are reduced to apprehending the occasional glue sniffer. You wouldn't perchance be a drug fiend yourself, would you, sir? Oh, I'm never without it. <laughs> now, where did I put that ton of heroin? I know I had it in the car this morning. <laughs> oh. Never ceases to amaze me. The sheer remorseless persistence of these drug squad boys. You'd think they'd get bored stiff, wouldn't you? Always taking things apart. Day after day, week after week, year in, year out. Always, always taking things apart. And never, never having the satisfaction of putting them back together again. <laughs>
mean, how near breaking point he is. I mean, he's under a hell of a lot of pressure at work, you know, and he won't give it up. I mean, one of these days, he's really going to come a cropper. I mean, it could be the making of him, as they say. I mean, on the other hand, it could just be the final straw, and he'll come home one day with an axe, and we'll all end up in the news of the world. Love crazed, jealous husband, slaves wife, and two kids. And milkman. And milkman. <laughs> one remorse for his terrible crime, and in an attempt to atone, Lester Small, 43, widower, stuck himself over the head 16 times with a murder weapon. Without success. Without success. <laughs> I'll do it. Stay where you are. But Leslie... Leave them. No. Oh, they're getting it too. No child of mine is growing up an orphan. But Lester, dear, why? Why? You want to know why? I'll tell you why. Because I've had it up to here. <laughs> you, him, the bank manager, the bloody copper. <laughs> now this. Look, you don't need me. This is a family affair. Stay where you are or I'll drop you. You're mistaken about us, you know. There never was anything between the two of us. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I don't. <laughs> First you, then her, then the twins, then me. You can't, Lester. You just can't do it like that. You're right. <laughs> First him, then you, then me, then the twins. <laughs> no, that's wrong, that's wrong. Uh, First him, then the twins, then... No, no. Uh, You, then, then him, him, then, then the, the twins. twins. What am I saying? Oh, no. Hell with it. Let's get it over with. No, please, please, please. I'm a Catholic. I need time. Eternity long enough? Let's <laughs> 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 oh, oh, you were listening. You were <laughs> 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 Not now, oh dear, I've got a headache. <laughs> oh, oh, follow him, right, but, but carefully, don't let him know we're on his tail. Better still, move over. Excuse me, sir. What is it? Could I see your driving license? <laughs> You're a good copper, Bright, but a little overzealous at times. <laughs> yes, sir. Sheer legs. He obviously wants to move something heavy. Who's a clever copper, then? Now, what something heavy would he be wanting to move? He is. <laughs> What's he doing in there? That place has been abandoned for years. The same thing could be said about your skull. <laughs> He's in there. Right, right, up that ladder. Me, sir? You're bright, aren't you? I don't see any other brights around here. I mean, the place is hardly infested with brights, but we're also <laughs> glad he mean you. I don't like that ladder. You don't have to make love to it, just climb it. <laughs> I'll get vertigo and fall off. Well, so long as you don't fall off before you reach the top, you'll be all right, won't you? <laughs> Go on, you first.
break a door down, Bright. Do it with your shoulder. Don't try and kick it down like some pansy footballer. <laughs> I think I've found what he wanted those shear legs for. <laughs> to offer it then? Well, shall we say enough to buy 80 foot of 4 by 2 80 foot, eh? Just so happens I've got a brother in the wood tray. The marrow speaking. <laughs> 80 feet? What, are you building an ark or something? No. It's for this. A bit like a dead bust. <laughs> Delivered at this address. And for a small fee, shall we say uh, five gallons of petrol, I could put you in touch with a customer who's going to need an engine just like this one. <laughs> no questions asked. No questions? None. <laughs> He's lost an engine exactly like that. <laughs> <laughs> He's also lost four wheels as well. <laughs> very, very, very good. And he doesn't want it spread, spread about. about. <laughs> Your ankle had better be bloody broken bright. <laughs> yeah, so he crawled away, dragging his broken leg behind him, you see. And that's when Scarface grabbed me from behind. Oh, I'm getting a little confused. Was this Scarface, the Scarface with the piggy eyes? The one you called Australopithecus with a bicycle chain? Or the Scarface with the machete? Uh, yeah, yeah, no, 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 piggy eyes, yes. <laughs> Mind you, it's a bit difficult to tell with his overhanging forehead. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and that's when I got this, do you see? He hit you? He, what, no, oh, no, 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 it's a bit silly, really. He fell over some dustbins and a lid flew up and hit me in the... Uh, uh, Good heavens, is that the time? I think it's beginning to heal the turn at all. Ah, now, it's, uh, I, I think I ought to have a proper appointment. Can't have people like me jump in the queue, can we? We certainly can. Oh. Oh. Mr. Small seems to object to the liquor case. Just the sort of thing one would expect from a man who has faced and overcome single-handed a band of brutish thugs. This is the kind of bravery that has to be respected, nurse. Very well. We'll dispense with the anaesthetic. Oh, <laughs> 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 